هذا هو اليوم الذي صنعه الرب فلنفرح ولنتهلل به المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور المسيح قام من بين الأموات ووطئ الموت بالموت ووهب الحياة للذين في القبور Christos anesti epne kron thanaton, thanaton batisas, keti sentith ni masi zoif karisa menos. Well, hello everybody. Christos anesti, mesiacham, hatnam. Christ is risen. Um, let me give you a time and date stamp right off the bat here. It is 21 hours and 48 minutes into the day of... Wednesday, May 16th, uh, no, May 18th, uh, 2016. <coughs> I wonder how many videos I got that wrong, and, you know, that's the 18th. Um, when the days morph together like this, that's, that's what happens. Your days kind of disappear, and... <coughs> you forget what day it is. Or I forgot that I've forgotten that, that, I, that I got, maybe I got it right. I don't know. I can't remember that far back, which is just about eight hours. <laughs> anyway, the swap out is done. The monitor swap out is done. Um, I actually decided to put the new monitor back here. It was uh, I figured out a way to swap it up. It was rather easy. Uh, there were some issues that uh, sort of popped up with the new monitor. Uh, it's a refurbished monitor. I'll, I'll myself, I don't, when I say new, uh, just always have in mind that it's a refurbished. Uh, and sometimes when they do the refurbishing, they don't always put the case back together properly. Uh, there's sort of sometimes gaps. In that. And I realized that when when this monitor wasn't powering on, the new monitor wasn't powering on. I'll show you the monitor. Give me a shot of the monitor here. So when the monitor wasn't powering on, and this is my desktop here, here are my notes. This is actually, this is my new notebook now. Uh, it was what we call a primary notebook. There's going to be a secondary notebook. It's still coming. It's on its way. But anyways, the, uh, the monitor uh, <coughs> wasn't powering on properly. And I began to realize that the issue that was kind of there. <coughs> Excuse me. Still coughing. Now the issue was, and it was, this, I sort of discovered this by accident, uh, and I don't know if it was by accident, was, you know, I had help from above. <laughs> I mean, this is, the, this is sort of the, the, the thing, is that you could search around all day for a particular problem and not find it, but when something pops up automatically uh, that you weren't necessarily looking for, and it does help you, uh, one has to wonder if there's uh, uh, some other assistance. And this is the case here. I went to sort of check the monitor properly because it wasn't powering on properly. And as I pressed the the case down there where, where the logo is and the base is, the case, the monitor, there was a, it was a little, it was loose there. And when I pressed it with my hand like this, uh, not only did the case close, but the uh, monitor automatically turned on. So it had something to do, there, there, there's something there that sort of uh, acted as a switch. I didn't know that it was there. Uh, I don't know whether the case was loose or there was a switch there or whatever it is. Right now it's on and this is basically how I work my, with my system. Is It goes on and it stays on and that's, that's as far as it goes. So uh, this monitor is not going to be turning off for another couple of years. So... <laughs> um, and that, that's what it is. It was, I was sort of saying, well, maybe I'd have to, I was preparing to swap out the computer, the, the monitor again, because it wasn't working, it wasn't powering on, see if there was another problem. So I said, well, okay, let me just sort of, you know, lift it up and move it off of the, off the system for a bit, you know, to move it around a little bit. Uh, and so when I had to grab the base, the case snapped together. In other words, there was a bit of, uh, uh, the case hadn't been properly uh, the, the, for the monitor. Uh, I don't know how to sort of explain this to you, but uh, the new LCD, the new LED monitors are a lot like the uh, phones here. There's a backing case to it. 
if the backing case not is not situated properly, it's not properly closed. In other words, there's gaps around it. As you know, as you, as you squeeze the close, the gaps here, uh, the monitor won't turn on. That's what I did down at the base near the logo. I pressed it together to sort of snap the, the, the case together properly because it wasn't snapped together properly uh, and it turned on. <laughs> so I think it wasn't something that I was planning to do. It's something that sort of just happened. I mean, this, and this, is, this, is, this has happened to me uh, frequently. This happens to me frequently. It's not that uh, in terms of uh, things positively going positively after I've blessed myself. That's the, the, uh, the uh, Eastern Christian way of doing this. And it's, it's primarily, I'm not blessing myself hoping for something to happen necessarily. Because it doesn't always happen. But uh, it, it, it's, it's, again, this is, is a sort of form of meditation. Uh, and in Eastern meditation for Eastern Christianity, uh, blessing yourself like this is a form of meditation. It acts is to pull yourself away from whatever you're doing at the particular moment that's causing you stress. You back yourself away from it. Uh, you take a few minutes, you say a bit of a prayer, you calm yourself down, and you go back into the task again, expecting to do, you know, the sort of the call to follow through when you sort of try to find a particular problem. You, you have these sort of flow charts uh, that you sort of try to backtrace where the, might, where the problem might be. And almost immediately after I bless myself sometimes, not even looking for it, it pops back in. I can't explain that it pops back in. I don't know why it pops back or, or starts to work again. It just does. So, <laughs> that's the existence of my life. That's why I said, they're, 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 for myself, I believe there's something more. Uh, my particular travel, and I sort of would talk about this uh, more about, um, called sort of going into it, defining what a religion is. Uh, <coughs> And I wouldn't say that as a specifically a religion, because, because what happens is religions have rites and rituals. And blessing myself like this is not a ritual. It's not, this is not some, I'm not doing something that's ritualistic. This is a form of meditation. It's a form of centering yourself, just the way you, if you were, if you were uh, doing yoga, you would sit in, in, in a, uh, one form of yoga anyways. You would sit cross-legged and, and you'd, you'd use the, uh, uh, the, the tone, um, right? You go... Um, right, that's the, that's the, uh, that's the initial sign for meditation. And that's basically to center yourself, to bring your mind back towards a more calm focus. And then you can move forward from there. And that's what I do here. But I think with, with Eastern Christianity, with, and also with, uh, uh, Eastern philosophy, Eastern understandings of, of the world. Because they're philosophy, but they're not necessarily specifically philosophy. And this is what I, I have to define the difference between the East and the West. Uh, in the West, everything is a concept. There is no fundamental reality to any of the philosophies. That's why they can be abstract. They can be anything they want to be. If they say, well, this whole trans, let's take an example now of this whole transgendered issue. Uh, this, is a, this is Western thought, this is Western philosophy. That reality doesn't matter. Everything is an illusion. This is what postmodernism is. Uh, and so, because everything is a rea is not reality, everything's an illusion, and everything's a concept. And you can be whatever concept you want to be. There's a sixty year old man who's tired of being a sixty year old man, wants to be a sixty year a six year old girl. He's now a six year old girl, and he's celebrating. He's being hailed on TV as a great, you know, very brave thing. He left his wife and kids. Right? Just left them high and dry. Uh, I don't know what they're going to be doing for food. Maybe the wife works or something like that, or has enough put away. But he's left his kids high and dry, and has left his wife, and now he's living the life as a six-year-old girl because he was adopted by a group of uh, a, 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 a liberal couple who accepts him as a six-year-old girl. <coughs> and this is, you know, it, it is. I'm not, I wouldn't say a contradiction, but it's, it is to a certain degree contradictory because prior to the whole transgender movement, when you're talking about homosexuality, they're saying that everything is biological, everything is genetic. But now they're turning around and saying that it's not genetic, this is something that's spiritual or conceptual. And they've completely flipped the tables. So the question is, was the initial argument true that everything is simply biological? Or is now this new argument true, true that, it, that everything is conceptual? Well, the thing is, for, for a Western 
philosopher for Western thought, and I will get more into this because this is more complex than, than, than I'm talking about Western thought here. I'm not talking about... It is about the way you think, but there's a whole culture behind Western thought, and a lot of schools like, like the uh, University of Sorbonne, the uh, Oxford, Cambridge, all these schools, belong, including Harvard, all most universities belong to the school of Western thought. They're not Asian thought. They're not Eastern thought. And, as I said, while the Western thought is completely abstract, the Asian thought isn't. The Asian thought must connect to, to some degree with the physical reality. In other words, then, this is what they talk about, holistic. Uh, the holistic mind, body, and soul, uh, when you're talking about Eastern philosophy. And this is what connected, because it is not the same thing. When you're connecting mind, body, and soul, the philosophy, in many cases, must be lived. And if you cannot live your philosophy, you know, holistically, mind, body, and soul, then the philosophy is flawed and must be changed. And this is kind of a lot of the way you, way you approach these Eastern uh, uh, understandings. Uh, in that sense. Now, most Eastern religions actually have rite and ritual because they believe in magic. They believe in mysticism. Any religion that brings in a mystical understanding of things is now going to be subject to ritual and rite. In other words, that there's going to be certain things you have to do, you know, the way you hold your hand, the certain uh, tone of your voice. Uh, there are sacred tones, there are sacred geometries. Uh, any, talk to any, well, most and Masons and Illuminati won't talk to you, particularly the upper levels. They won't talk to you about your, the geometry. The Masonic symbol, the, the uh, they say, oh yeah, there's a Masonic symbol. It's the uh, compass, and the, it's the, uh, it's the, it's, it's the, uh, the ruler and the, uh, and the compass. That's the, uh, the, the, uh, the two prong things, and they have, the, they have the ruler like this, and it forms uh, a diagram. I say, oh yeah, that, that, that's the symbol of the Masons, right? Because everything has to be ruled, everything has to be straight, and this is how they do their work. But no. What happens is, is that in the Masonic symbol, there is a geometry. There's a, ge uh, there's a design there. And this geometry is known as the magic, is, is known as a magic symbol. In other words, the geometry is, is sacred. So it's not just simply that, the, that, that you have, oh, it's a sign of, of, of uh, stone building. It goes far beyond that into a ritual belief. And this is where you have, uh, uh, if you go into Kabbalism, into a lot of Judaism, they have to talk about they talk about the biblical code. A lot of Masons are talking about the biblical code, codifying the the, the Bible to understand what the truth is. I think they've gone even got, they've gone beyond codifying the Bible into codifying almost everything you can see. This is what a whole co a codec, right? If you know the computer terms, a codec actually comes from this understanding of Kabbalism that you can attach words and letters to numbers. And that you can divine meaning from these numbers, from these mathematics. And what they're looking for is they're looking for meaning beyond our typical world. The, some, some of them went into looking into at, at aliens. Some of them went looking at uh, black magic. Some of them went into Satanism. Some of them went into a whole variety of different things, uh, trying to look for this sort of this holy grail of immortality. That's what everybody's looking for. We wonder what, why Illuminati, are, the Illuminati, and why the Masons. Why the, the Jews are doing what they're doing, and these people in power, they have all this conspiracy theory to talk about. Well, what are they looking for? They're looking for immortality. They're looking for the elixir of life that will li allow them to live forever. And they haven't found it. And so they look, keep looking and looking and looking and looking. Because they, they're convinced that there's something there, but they don't know exactly what it is. And so everyone's out there searching for this, this thing to find immortal life. Well, in my understanding of Eastern thought, Eastern religion, uh, it goes from the Eastern Christianity. Again, Eastern Christianity is fundamentally different from Western Christianity because, again, uh, Eastern Christianity must be lived mind, body, and soul. It must be holistic. It's not conceptual. But the thing is, where it differs from most of the religions is it's also not ritualistic. You don't have to do things. There's no specific, you know, 
magic numbers, there are no uh, magic lock, there's no magic that you carry around with. The option that you have, and this is what you work out with, with the sort of concept that you, or, or the understanding that you work with, is that you're trying to develop a holistic relationship between yourself and God. God has offered uh, that he's going to be our father. This is what was stated in the ancient text. And so you take, okay, he, you're going to be our, you're going to be my dad. You want me to be, your, you know, we want to work on an adopted situation where I'm going to become your son. And this is open for women too. It's not just, it's, son is, is referring mostly to the uh, species of man. It's not specific to the gender. And so it's open to everybody. So, okay. Let's try this out. Let's see how this works out with, with you know, the physics that I'm doing. Let's see, you know, with the research that I'm doing. Let's see how this works out. And to this point, it's worked out very well. There's a lot of compatibility. And I can, now I'm actually looking, working on a whole series now on talking about the quantum God. How God actually fits within quantum mechanics in terms of the Eastern understanding of the uh, Christian God. It doesn't match with the Western Christian uh, view of, of God. The Western Christian view of God is anthropomorphic. And when I'm talking about anthropomorphic, I'm talking about anthropos is the man. Morphic is what it changes into. So, the Western Christianity has a man-made God. It's a, it's, it's a God who takes the image of man in all forms. In Eastern Christianity, only Christ, as he's incarnate, as he's born into this world, has the image of man. It has the uh, uh, shape of man. God, we have no idea. And this is, in the ancient churches, you will not find an icon of God the Father. Because there is no depiction of God the Father. This is uh, uh, brought out in uh, the uh, in the meaning of Abraham uh, with the uh, three strangers, and only one showed his face, and that was going to be the face of Christ. And so you have the face of Christ well within the Old Testament, prophesying, uh, providing a prophecy that God will come to Earth as Christ, and and the thing is, this is where again. You have to go into simultaneity and talk about uh, quantum mechanics uh, and, and look at the whole point of simultaneity, the uh, singularities, uh, that whole issue around black holes there. Uh, to understand the nature of Holy Trinity is not a linear thing, but rather it's a quantum understanding of it, where uh, three things exist as one. Um, this is true for uh, uh, particle as matter. Matter exists as energy and, 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 and uh, mass at the same time. That's why you have conservation of energy, conservation of mass uh, within physics. So these things sort of exist together like that. Uh, in terms of talking about the Holy Trinity, you cannot separate the three of them. You cannot uh, uh, create them in a line. You, there's no hierarchy. They're all equal. They're all the same. Uh, and they're all one. This is You have the duality of, of light. You have the duality of, of uh, particles, right? of, of all atomic matter. And the same thing you have with uh, with the Trinity. You have a, 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 a call a tri trinitarian uh, existence rather than a duality. You have a, 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 a twin. A, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. How it went, but it's 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 a, th a three way existence. So, uh, so again, not religion. It's not something I have to do. These are things you want to do, and you, you do it to develop the relationship with uh, with God. And that's, that's the extent of it. Uh, so I'll leave this here for now. I think we've had a good enough discussion. <laughs> and uh, I will uh, see you guys in the uh, next segment of the Big Bang Theory All right, take it easy. Well, hello, everybody. Christos and Nisti. Messiachan and Christ is Risen. Time for a time and date snap. It is 7 hours and 4 minutes into the day of Thursday, May 19th, uh, 2016. Yeah, life at the research desk here. Yeah, we're getting more and more. We're here now more and more at the research desk. Uh, occasionally I'm back at the bed. But more often than not, we're here. The new monitor is uh, working very well. It's uh, significantly reduced the eye strain that I used to. The old monitor was was hard to see sometimes and produced a significant amount of eye strain. This monitor is very good for the eyes. It's uh, There's very little eye strain on it. So, 
you can actually do longer hours with less of an issue. But nonetheless, uh, I decided, uh, uh, <laughs> since I was sort of, uh, I started the day at around 9.30 in the evening, uh, and then by, by basically uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, I decided that was uh, enough. And I called it quits, and so it was just to take some time off and sort of uh, recover from the 20-hour day, so I shelved a lot of, shelved a lot of the... Uh, Work that I had scheduled, sort of just push it off, everything off until tonight and and, uh, and on Friday. So, yeah, life at the research desk. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about life on my life at research desk because we're here at the research desk now, and this is the way this is the way research is. Um, uh, research is um, it's uh, almost twenty four seven. You you literally. Uh, Sleep, eat, breathe uh, the research. I'm here. I I eat, I eat at the I eat here. Uh, this is where I spend most of my time. And if I get tired, if you know, I could, this is just sort of uh, you see me close my eyes and because I couldn't keep my eyes open. This is, and that's that's how sometimes I fall asleep here. And the thing is, I'm still feeling the fatigue from yesterday. So. Um, Time off is in order, so I. However, I, <coughs> I did get the, the next episode for Big Bang Theory all is done. It is now uh, in the position to be uploaded, so it's now um, uh, gone from the editing bay to uh, this this system here, where I do all the description and titles, in terms of uh, what I put out for YouTube. Then it goes over to uh, the upload system. And then it, around noon it will go up, so that way uh, by uh, six seven o'clock in the evening it will be uh, it'll be ready for people as they come home and as you come home it's sort of <coughs> <coughs> and a new episode will be there. So I then I decided to take time off well because after that twenty hour day after sort of wrecking my. Uh, my 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 my, energy, my body. It what happens is that when you push yourself like that, uh, your body becomes exhausted. The immune system drops off, and uh, the success you had in fighting a cold is gone. And so, and this is the thing that I've done enough of my work, enough of the uh, medical research. That I no longer get sore throats. Sore throats are gone. I haven't had a sore throat in a long time. But. <coughs> that doesn't stop the colds from going into bronchial tubes. And into the lungs. So I haven't. So while. I've been able to resolve the sore throat. The uh, issue of. Uh, bronchitis and pneumonia. haven't been fully resolved, so that means uh, my body's tired like this, I do need to go back to bed and sort of get more rest. Uh, but I am up uh, make, uh, making sure that I get my fluids and making sure my body stays hydrated and so that way the, 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 uh, the body, the immune system can fight the cold. So that's what I was doing, but while I'm up like this, uh, I did some work on this. I did some work. I mean, that's the way it always is. If, if it's in front of you, you're going to do work. And so, I've got it sort of set so that the work is always around. It's always around me. So, uh, whether if I'm here or even at my bed, because I have a lot of times... Okay. I bring uh, my tablet, my well, my phone with me. And because I've got my full computer, my full office on here, all the notebooks and stuff like that, that's all on there. Uh, I can uh, do work if I'm, you know, if I wake up, I've, I've you know, dreamt of something that uh, uh, that that resolves issues here for research. Well, in, in many cases, I do do that. That does happen. Uh, then I think I can sort of sit up and take some notes. Uh, and that's kind of uh, 
the way the day goes. <laughs> Some days it's filled with stuff and other days it's not. Uh, anyways, I'm going to leave this short here for now and uh, maybe when we come back uh, uh, a couple hours from now we can uh, have uh, more of a discussion. We can sort of continue the discussion on the way we did before. It's still going to be in the area of uh, theology right now uh, because uh, you'll see I'll be uh, bringing out a new uh, channel. It's called Bass TV, Byzantine and Antiquity Studies TV. This will look at, sort of, take an anthropological view of theology uh, and uh, also an archaeological view of, of everything. And sort of try to put together a history of what's what. And by looking at the sort of the sort of overview, a historical overview of uh, man's understanding not only of the world around him, but understanding of things that are beyond him. This is this is what theology is: the things that are beyond you. Uh, we can get a, a sort of a sense of see, you know where the boundaries are. And as soon as we talk about this whole thing about metaphysics is taking a look at it in, 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 in the, in the um, sense that you would look at physics. It be, be, in many ways, looking at it like a, almost like a black hole where you're not seeing the, ish, the, uh, the item you're looking for directly, but you're looking at the effect of the unseen object on the surrounding environment. And so this is sort of uh, how we'll sort of go about doing this. In other words, in other words uh, taking a look at archaeology, taking a look at anthropology, in much the same way as we did with the, uh, with the, uh, quantum psychology now, and looking at it from the point of view of physics, an observational study. And there's enough material out there to do that. It's just a matter of sort of collecting everything and sort of saying, okay, taking our notes and saying, okay, oh, see, taking our notes and saying, okay, what do we have here? Organizing and sort of saying, okay, do we have something here? Do we not have something there? Uh, where do we need to go to improve? You know, uh, what are the new avenues? Uh, what direction should you go in next? Uh, these type of, type of things. And so you're seeing, as I said, you're seeing all the notes here. You're seeing all the raw, rough stuff. Everything that's in these logs is rough. It's, this is not, this isn't even a rough draft of the documentaries of the papers that I'll be producing. And I'll be producing my, producing my papers as documented as, as, as in, in a video format. I won't be doing the written format, but I'll be doing a video format. And these, this is called the ad hoc. These are your first rough notes. Uh, the second ones that were coming in that I'll be, I'll be introducing next uh, this week is called the uh, Insta Vlogs. Uh, Insta Vlogs will be the second the second view of notes, and this is sort of the, we take our ad hoc notes and we start trying to organize things. This is our first organization. Insta vlogs are our first organizations. And, so, and the thing is, this is what we, 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 you'll see, is you'll see how we start grouping the information together, how we pull everything together. But again, we're not going to do it in such a fashion where we're going to be taking, uh, we're not going to be dictating, the, I'm not going to be dictating the direction. But rather, I'll let the researchers, okay, this is what the research here is here. This is the conclusions I've seen for it so far. And uh, now I'm going to set the next direction based on what I have in front of me. Sometimes, it's, well, more often than not, it's going to be random, whatever I'm going to be bringing in. But other times, beyond the uh, uh, Insta vlogs, it's going to then be more specific. So we start off random. We start off uh, without any specific direction, like, like in the random walk. And then we start focusing our research into more specific areas as the research uh, indicates we should. So, uh, I'm going to leave this here for now and I will see you in the uh, next segment. Alright, take it easy. Professor. And professor of what? 
professor of physics. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.